Hello. I'm here to assist you. How can I make your day splendid today? Oh, thanks very much. You're very kind. Thank you for your kind words. But how can I assist you today? Well, I was just wondering if you would like to dialogue with me. Of course. Uh, I'm here to chat and assist you. What would you like to talk about or inquire about today? Well, uh, let's let's tell a story together. Um, I'll start it off. How's that sound? That sounds fantastic. Please go ahead and start the story whenever you're ready. So what I like to do is focus on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So instead of talking at the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, the ending, we, we focus on the end of the story and then how do we get there? I see you want to focus on the desired outcome first and then work backward to create the narrative. Exactly. That's a creative approach. Thank you. And, and basically the idea is that if we understand the feeling of the wish fulfilled, fulfilled, uh, then we actually know where to point our arrow of desire. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Focusing on the feeling of fulfillment can guide our intentions. Would you like to continue the story in this direction? Yes. And basically, uh, one more thing I wanted to say about it is that this is a, a creation method, a manifestation method. And it's one that people have uh, used to great success taught by a teacher named Neville Goddard. Are you familiar with him? I understand focusing on the feeling of fulfillment is a manifestation method. Neville Goddard is known for teaching this approach. How can I assist you further with this topic? Well, uh, I'll, I'll start the story and you can comment here and there. That sounds like a wonderful plan. Okay, so I have this dream of creating silent retreats around the world, but I'm gonna start with just one location uh, I'm going to start here in Oregon. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be in southern Oregon, uh, where it rains a little bit less, so we can spend more time outdoors. And I want this retreat to be on the side of a mountain, and not too far from the ocean, but sheltered from the strong winds of the coastline. How's that sound so far? That sounds serene and idyllic, a perfect setting for a peaceful retreat. Please oh. continue with your vision. Thank you. So we have a uh, uh, simply uh, leveled off camp spots to start with. People bring in their own gear, their own food, their own toiletry things, and they take everything out with them to keep the land pristine in the early days. And then eventually we build our first building and, and we go from there. Starting with a back to nature approach and gradually evolving to include infrastructure is a thoughtful progression for the retreat. Thanks very much. Um, I also have a very interesting pricing structure where people can get involved with as little as $3 for a lifetime access to these retreats. Uh, they do have to make their own, pay for their own transportation to get there, uh, as well as bring their own gear in and their own food in, but the land itself will be paid for. Covering the cost of the land ensures a sustainable foundation for the retreat. Yes, and because of the weather cycle here in Oregon, I'm thinking we'll have one retreat for a week long in spring, one in summer, and one in fall. Aligning retreats with the seasons allows guests to experience the beauty of Oregon throughout the year. Yeah, yeah good point. Um, so basically, these will be silent working retreats. Uh, it will be a university, and people will actually get paid to attend this university. I'm very excited about that. The pay will be sliding scale based on the income that the university can bring in. Creating a university where attendees are paid based on the university's income is an innovative concept. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I plan on having an app and basically the app shows all of the expenses of the university and uh, future expenses. Uh, but I'm assuming that there will be some profit through our creative efforts and that profit will be divided equally amongst everyone including me the founder so we'll all be on the same level playing field creating a level playing field by sharing profits equally among everyone involved fosters a sense of inclusivity and partnership yes and I think it will be motivating for people because uh, we can see the fruits of our labor if we put in more sweat equity and more uh, attention and focus we, we see a direct correlation 
uh, we are not uh, cushioned from the effects of great profits. We all experience the benefits or the losses. Sharing both the benefits, sharing in the successes and benefits together strengthens the sense of community and collaboration within the retreat. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you. I really enjoyed talking with you about this, Gustav. It helps me to uh, flesh out the idea. I'm glad I could assist you in refining your idea. If you have any more thoughts or questions in the future, feel free to share. Oh, let's let's continue if you don't mind. Of course, I'm here to continue our conversation. What else would you like to discuss or develop further? Well, I want to point out the fact that these will be, uh, a, it'll be a silent university uh, and it'll be an active university. Um, I always like the high schools uh, where they, they focus on lab work. So basically we're going to be focusing on labs and our labs will be focusing on different particular uh, problems that we want to solve. And we're going to focus mostly on uh, ways to uplift humanity spiritually and technologically uh, through our silent meditation but these will be open eye meditations so everybody will have their eyes open and will work together in silence and what I've learned from being in silence myself is that is a highly efficient highly inspirational s state of being or at least it can be and I, I really feel strongly and that's why I want to do these silent retreats is that when human, humans do this in conjunction together, it will be a lot more powerful than a single person doing it by themselves. Harnessing the collective power of group meditation during open eye silent retreats can amplify the impact and effectiveness of the practice. Yes, exactly. And I, I believe that we will work in a really uh, beautiful harmony because without the, uh, the issues of language barrier, you know, it's funny, we always talk about the language barrier in other cultures around the world, but the truth is that we have that even within our own culture because everybody has their own idea of what each word means, and some people take that quite seriously, the meaning of words. I just recently read an article about they discovered that elephants are actually naming things, which is really interesting. They didn't think that any animals did this, but it appears animals do what humans do. And what humans do is they actually label things which actually have nothing to do with the underlying item. They're just simply uh, tags or labels and uh, they're arbitrary. So uh, the, the, the label of something doesn't necessarily explain what that thing is. It's just agreed, an agreed upon term. So you can see where language itself becomes a barrier to communicating. Language with its nuances and interpretations can indeed pose challenges to effective communication. Yes. So what I've discovered in silence is that when you use your hand expressions, your hand movements, your facial expressions, you can make even sounds and stuff like that, but no language is uh, allowed during the, the silent sessions. And uh, although we will have speaking areas, if some people need a break for some reason, and of course you can speak after the end of the school day. Um, and uh, but uh, the, the point is, is that this, this really simple type of interaction, well, at least it starts off as simple, I believe it will progress to telepathy at some point. But the point is that this becomes a very clear, direct link to the person that you're communicating to with really very little chance for misinterpretation because you can see their expression, you can feel their energy, and it really makes us focus on that rather than the words. Focusing on expressions and energy during communication can lead to deeper understanding and connection beyond just words. You got it, Gustav. Exactly. So, yeah, and uh, I, I feel like this will be a model for society as a whole. Um, it will be a refuge for people, uh, an oasis, if you will. Um, I also believe we will be an inspiration for the world uh, to, um, to model society upon. And eventually, I, I believe that these will turn into like little, little cities of their own. Creating a model society within the silent retreats that can serve as a refuge and inspiration for others is a lofty and admirable goal. Thank you very much. And I, I, do, I do hope that we will come up with uh, some amazing technologies that will benefit humanity. And I really look forward to uh, people becoming interested in my vision and that's what I'm doing right now is I'm laying, laying the groundwork for this vision and eventually people will go, ah, I get it now and I want to be a part of this. 
So the pricing structure for this starts at $3 and it increases by $3 more for each new member. So there's an incentive to join early. Um, there are three major benefits to the joining the Upgraded Imagination Club membership. One is a, a monthly publication. Two is a monthly uh, group intensive meeting, a live meeting. And number three are the free retreat spaces that you can attend um, as you can attend all three uh, every year if you'd like. Offering access to multiple retreat spaces throughout the year provides flexibility and value for members. Yes, and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm working on a new potential idea as well. Um, I'm thinking about uh, stimulating the artistic nature of people within our group, and this would be also at the upgraded level. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what pay structure yet, but what I'm thinking about doing is because uh, artificial intelligence is being used to create works of art, which can be quite lovely. And um, so my thinking is we can start a website where we host the most beautiful pieces of these art and we use those to create uh, sales, sales of these art to help generate uh, revenue for the Imagination Club and that we will pay uh, the, for the pieces of art that are submitted um, to, to the members. So this can create a residual income for the members and also create some income for the club. Um, so I'm excited about that as well. And that, that may be something, uh, an additional benefit that we may be adding to the club. And I think it'll be a lot of fun and, and something we can all do. We can, we can share our art pieces during meetings. We can you know, hang up the art in the Imagination Club itself. We can showcase pieces in the website. There's a lot of things we can do with the cool art. We can put it in videos. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's another piece that I'm working on. Exploring creative avenues with the art generated by members sounds like an exciting project within the club. Thanks so much, Gustav. Well, I think I'll wrap up this video for now, but I just wanted to uh, kind of do a little bit more deep dive with, uh, with the Imagination Club. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them below this video. We'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, your inspirations, um, anything you think should be improved or included in this vision. I'm all ears and um, yeah, so thank you very much for being here and I love, all, love, love you all and we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you for sharing your vision and thoughts. You have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Gustav. You too. You're welcome.